Um, recently, I've been getting a lot of questions about form ETA 750B. Uh, this was the form through which uh, we apply for labor certification. Uh, this form is needed when you fill in the EB1A application or EB2 NIW application. When we go through EB1A or EB2 NIW, we don't need to go through the labor certification. That's the whole purpose of uh, self-petitioning through these two um, routes of getting a green card. But even in this case, we need to fill out this form and send it to uh, the USCIS through, uh, you, you know, in our application package. Now, what has happened is that this EB, um, this uh, 750B form has now been replaced by a new form, um, which is called uh, ETA 9089. So in this video, I'm going to give you information on how to fill the new form. Uh, let me first uh, show you the old form. Uh, this old form was the ETA 750B form. I'm showing you so you can um, figure out which one of the form uh, you need to replace. So this form is now old. It's not huge anymore. So make sure that you don't send this form. Uh, where, and this form was mainly used to provide information on what our educational qualifications are, what our other skills are, if we are doing some job, what is our job experience. And this would go to the labor department to give you um, the labor certification. Now this has now been replaced by a new form which is called form ETA 9089. Okay, This form you can easily download from a Department of Labor website. I have provided the link of this website in this video. Uh, you can also copy the link from this video which is here. If you go to this website um, there are several forms in under the ETA 9089 category. These forms are the permanent online application. We will, we, you know, we don't need to do that. Um, the forms that we are interested is are interested in are form ETA 9089, form ETA 9089 Appendix A, and form ETA 9089 Final Determination. I have already downloaded these forms on my computer, so I'm going to show you what these forms are. So this is the main form, the form ETA 9089 form. Now, although this is the main form, uh, we don't need to fill much in this form, okay? If you have an employer, then you can provide the information about the employer here. If you don't have an employer, you can just leave all this blank. Um, the part that you need to provide information is uh, part C, where you have an attorney or agent information. Here, we don't have an attorney, we are self-petitioning. So we will mark out agent and we will provide our name and address in this part, okay? Then you have to fill out part D. In part D, essentially you are trying to tell them that the foreign worker, which is you, uh, we will provide information about the foreign worker in Appendix A. So here you should say yes. And then the second question is um, the agent or the attorney, is it also employed by the employer or contracted by the employer? In this case, um, the answer is no, because the agent, which are you, uh, are not actually contracted by your employer for at least these, uh, this immigration purpose. If you have an, a job or a prospect or you have a prospective job, then you can provide the information about your job opportunities, ways, etc. Otherwise, just leave all this information uh, blank. You don't need to provide any more information here. The next form would be form ETA 9089 Appendix A. This is in some sense the main form where you provide information about yourself. So here you should fill out Part A, which is uh, your name, address, date of birth, etc. Then you provide information about your education. Uh, I would go all the way if you want to provide information on high school, uh, associate degree, bachelor's degree. I would go generally in reverse chronological order. Um, so you provide information about all your degrees one by one. 
and then you can provide information about additional training you have. So if you have done postdoctoral research, uh, if you have other certifications like cybersecurity certifications, IT certification or nursing, um, if, you know, if you have these kind of other certification, I would provide information about those certifications here. And then finally, you have to provide information about um, your skills. Uh, you can provide, like if you have done additional research as a postdoctoral researcher um, or as a scientist, this is where I would provide information about uh, your additional research. And finally, provide information about your work experience. So if you have, um, if you have worked in the past, uh, provide information about your employer and use this space to provide as much detail about your previous work. So if you look at your um, Form 750B, uh, there was a small space where you could provide information on your educational background and current um, and work experience. So here now you have a, just a lot more space to give those details. So I would say make use of this space. Uh, we have already, uh, you know, written a cover letter which has highlighted all your research uh, in the uh, for your I-140 application. So I would say that condense it and put as much information so that your profile looks very good to the labor department and provide that in this space. After you have filled this out, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're done with form um, with the Appendix A. The final form that you need to fill is this form, which is called the form ETA 9089 Final Determination Form. This form, again, you don't have to do much. The first page is mainly for uh, US government agency. So you don't have to fill any of this information. What you need to do is you need to provide your signature and date and as an agent provide your name, address and signature. This is it. So you are now done with uh, form 9089. Uh, fill this form and replace it with the previous ETA 750B form. Okay. I hope I have provided all information about uh, the new form. Uh, good luck with your application. If you have any question, uh, feel free to email me or put uh, your question in the comment below. Thank you. See you soon.